Merry Christmas, and welcome to Geeko Farm, where we do things differently. Bugger. This is our slice of paradise. 250 mature olive trees and a big white house up here on the hill, and a high-tech fab lab down in the town. We run a small IT business, brew alcohol, press olives, teach young geeks, <coughs> grow fruit and veg, hunt, farm chickens, and experiment. But today on Geeko Farm, we're going to put a couple more hydroponic runs into the system. We were going to use little runs, but Suz wants the option of upgrading to big runs. So we can forget them. So we're going to put up two runs, not three, because we discovered the greenhouse isn't wide enough. I've got three run uh, supports here. Um, Simple enough to convert them to two run supports. We anchor these things to the ground using waratahs. They come in two lengths, tall and short, and uh, they use as fence posts. They're made of steel. They've got one pointy end, one blunt end for hitting with a sledgehammer, and if you notice, they are a trefoil section. And um, these little holes here are what we will be bolting our hydroponic supports to. Using one waratah as a guide and uh, a bottle as a spacer to make sure I get everything even, I'm going to take one of the tall waratahs and smack it in the ground near the back. This is trickier than it seems because of that. Fortunately, not all waratahs are the same height. So I'll pick a shorter one. Probably want to cover your eyes with something. Uh, these things throw off a bit of shrapnel sometimes. You want to check occasionally to make sure they're going in level. For this, I recommend a level. When they've gone in far enough, next one. So I can see some people saying, why use waratahs instead of bits of wood? Well, to be honest, waratahs are cheaper than bits of wood that will stand up to the punishment and the hydroponic solutions, and I can reuse the waratahs later for something else. I cocked up and bought the wrong size waratahs. Uh, can't be asked to go back into town and get new ones. Um, so we're getting a bit creative as to how we're knocking them in the ground. You just by the right size ones, all right? Bolt underneath. Stops all this lot from moving down. That should be close enough. Here we go. Straight as a dog's hind leg. But it'll have to do. A hydroponic run needs to be on about a 40 to 1 slope. That one's level. And under this end, we have 75 millimeters of packing. It's a three meter long run, means we got the 40 to one slope. So we can stick a bolt in right about there and fix it all up. From here on in, it's pretty much like we showed you in the episode on hydroponic strawberries. So go to our YouTube channel and watch the Geeko Farm episode on hydroponic strawberries. So here's a section of 150 by 100 millimeter rectangular PVC downpipe. Uh, that's about two inches by four inches in old money. Uh, I've selected a piece that's reasonably straight and that doesn't have a bow top or bottom surface so that the water will flow smoothly through it. First of all, I'm going to mark off an inspection hole and drainage hole at 65 millimeters from this end. So I have to mark both sides. Here we go. I'm only marking the distance. I'm not marking the center of the tube just yet. All right, technically it is a tube, I suppose. All right, now at this end, uh, I'm going to start the first run 130 millimeters, which is just over six inches in old money from the end of the tube. Now the hole spacing we're going to use is 200 millimeters 
this is pretty close in hydroponics uh, for plants to be together, uh, but we are growing mostly beans, as you can see here, and we can grow those quite close together. We like a good supply of beans. So, that's 200 millimeters. I can now just go along here, marking 200 millimeter increments, which is long and boring to watch on video, so we'll cut to the chase. It's important not to grow plants all the way up to the last hole, because if you do, their roots will block the drain and flood the run. The pipe actually isn't exactly a hundred millimeters wide, so um, you have to experiment a bit with where the center is. And when I've marked all these, I'll go along with a little center punch, mark them all up, and drill them out with a press drill in the workshop. I'm doing this here because uh, the lighting's better for the camera. We'll be using a hole drill to drill holes notionally 45 millimeters in diameter, which is a standard size for hydroponic pots, and of course the size of the ones we 3D print. You can buy hydroponic end caps like these for a variety of different run sizes from hydroponic suppliers. But as we happen to have far too many 3D printers, we print them ourselves. We take the 3D printed end cap or a commercially bought one. We fill the trough in there around it with uh, some silicone or epoxy or proper pipe welding cement or whatever you've got. And uh, affix it to the end of the tube with my favorite tool the mallet. There. Fits like a glove, as OJ Simpson would say. Whip my finger in the ever handy fire bucket and use a wet finger to smear silicone around the end like that. So we'll be using this as the drain and it requires a uh, 25mm hole to fit. Probably meant to be an inch. <laughs> and this is another good reason for having that big inspection port in the top Even then it's fair fiddly. There we go. And there we go. And we just drill the water inlet hole, not too close to this end. And try not to go all the way through. Yep. Pop it in. Snug fit. And there she goes. On completed run. All right. Now you know how to build a hydroponic run from scratch. Later we'll show you how to manage all the nutrients and the general care and feeding of a hydroponic system. But for now that's your lot down on the Eco Farm. And from everyone at Geco Farm, Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas and a Happy New Year.